You don't have to wait for me to shout. Let's raise it up. Raise it up. Hallelujah. Glory to God. You may be seated. We're going to change something. Y'all don't run away. Have a seat. Y'all are beautiful, by the way. Beautiful. You bring a message that draws us to Him. Darlene, I love you. This is an awesome teacher. Go ahead and stand up. How many kids do you have? 17. They're going to put more on you? Probably. She needs an assistant. Anybody from Locus that wants to be an assistant to this beautiful lady to help her? Pat, you sweetheart, thank you. Let me tell you what, God's going to raise up in us as well as around, but I believe he's going to start it in us where we're going to sit with our teachers and be strength to them and pray over them even in the classroom. It's, amen. You've been, how long have you taught? 25 years, honey. This is a year of Jubilee. We haven't even got to 50. <clears throat> Amen. I have a message. I don't have a message. I have a word. I have a word that God gave me. I shared it Wednesday night. If you weren't here, <clears throat> now I'm joking. I shared it with our small group in Bible study. So they're going to have to live through it again. Because this is, this is where God has me. Last week, God did an incredible thing. He took over a service. Thank you, Jesus. Ain't God cool? <laughs> Do you realize he has taken it over again? I'm going to share something with you, a couple thoughts that God has just stirred let me, let me share this right up front. There is such a thing as a righteous war. There is. But there's two criteria, and the world doesn't see the second one. Because they're not of God. The world says, well, I'm going to stand up and stop evil. Hogwash. Flesh does not stop evil. It is the Spirit of God that stops evil. It is a change of heart. It is a change of thought. It is a change of respecting people. We live in a world who has lost its self-respect. They have no respect for law and order and authority. And God has got to bring us back. What do you think, Judge? You think people need to come under authority? That would be good. They need to live under your authority. Because God put you in that place to be that standard. Last Sunday, we prayed for our teachers. And Vivian was up here, and, and, and it was a humorous moment. And I'm going to use her for an example. And we, she was up here, and I said, man, I'd like to be in your class. Judge stood up and said, no, you wouldn't. She's strict. You're at Albemarle High this year? Stand up. Come here. And the Holy Spirit, when I went home in the evening, said, you missed the greatest opportunity to identify what God is saying to us. We need teachers who won't bow to human standard. <laughs> Honey, you have our blessing. We are with you. 
If somebody rises up and says your standards are too high, you look them in the eye and say, I know some people who don't think they are. <laughs> and we'll march with you. We'll walk into the halls with you. But ba baby, don't you back down. Don't you back down. Never, never, never. We don't need to be dumbed down. We need to be lifted up to a higher standard, to a higher standard. Every one of our teachers need to know that we're standing with you because we want to be people who not only have school learning, but have an education about things much more important. Amen. I got to share it with you. I'm, it, really, I don't have a sermon. I do have a sermon, but I don't have a sermon. And I don't need a pulpit because it's burning in me. Psalms 149. Now you're going to see a little part of this warrior kind of guy coming out. God keeps me in check. I told you that. I haven't finished this first part. Let me finish this first part I started with. I'm, I, I don't even have notes. That's okay. I don't need them. For something to be a righteous war, there has to be the heart that stands up and says, I will stop the evil that's all around me. I will go to battle against the darkness. Now, I want you to know something. There have been many times America has gone to battle to stop darkness, but that doesn't stop darkness. Because here's the second thing and the criteria that makes something a righteous war. And the, on the heels of that, there must be salvation to the nation. That's the key. For God to say something as a righteous war, you have to go against the darkness, but you can't leave darkness still there. You have to bring the salvation light. It has to be the light of the gospel of Jesus Christ. It has to be the love of God into a world that does not know love. It has to be love, joy, peace. That's what God wants to bring into the darkness. If you and I penetrate the darkness and we go in in our own strength, we have already lost. But go in the power of God. Go in the strength of his word. He not only wants you to have understanding of the word, he wants you to have a deep knowledge of the word. Why? Not for you to be some lofty, great theologian. No. He said, but every one of us have to be able to provide a, Defense. Hmm. Think about it. I want to show you the pattern of God. What we did this morning is God's pattern. And then I want to show you some couple other little thoughts, and then I'm done. Then we'll finish our service. But listen to this, Psalms 149. Praise the Lord. Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing his praises in the assembly of of the faithful. Now this is a warrior's song and prayer. O Israel, rejoice in your maker. O people of Jerusalem, exalt in your king. Praise his name with dancing. Anybody ever see or hear about anybody dancing in the scriptures? David did. When? When they were bringing the ark home. Let me tell you what, the ark is the presence of God. That's what it symbolizes. Glory to God. He says, praise him with your singing, praise him with your worship, praise him with your dance. Now, you don't want to watch me dance. I am ugly. I get all sweaty when I dance. But before my God, I will dance. It may be looking like a little two-year-old. But before my God, I'll dance. Men, God's called us to have a spiritual dance sometime. Listen to me. 
Pastor, that's for kids. Maybe. But I'm a child of a king. And I'll dance if he says dance. You know why? He said, if you'll humble yourself, I'll lift you up. But if you're prideful, if you're arrogant, if you think you're too good to be humble before the Almighty God, you're of no value to the warring team. I sat at home a number of days this week, not every day, with praise and worship and meditating on his word and saying, God, I'm seeing what you're saying. And all I could do is go, God, you're awesome. God, you're awesome. I don't capture it all, but what my finite mind can capture, you're awesome. There aren't a lot of things awesome to me, but that is one of them. When his presence comes down and he goes, Now listen to this. For the Lord, deli- or, uh, let me go back here. Praise his name with dancing accompanied by tambourine and harp. We need a tambourine, we need a harp. Right there, right there. For the Lord delights in his people. Did you hear that? He crowns the humble with what? Did you hear that? He crowns the humble with victory. The battle is the Lord's. Listen to this. Let the faithful rejoice that he honors them. Do you realize as we go to battle, God says he is bringing honor to you? You know why he is bringing success into the the midst of his people? It's not for you and me. It's for his glory. Let the faithful rejoice that he honors them. Let them sing for joy as they lie on their beds. Now listen to this. Let the praises of God be in their mouths and a sharp sword in the hands. I mean, remember anybody else having a troll in one hand and a sword in the other? How about Nehemiah and Ezra when they were rebuilding the city? I believe God wants to rebuild the ruined walls of this county. Juanita came up to me during worship and she said, Pastor, I've prayed for years. And she's a teacher. She's now sort of, I guess, semi-retired maybe. She said, I've been praying that God will find his place back in our schools. And she says, Pastor, this is a prayer coming to pass. Watch this. Let the praises of God be in, the, in their mouths and a sharp sword in their hands. To do what? To execute vengeance on the nations and punishment on the peoples. To bind their kings with shackles and their leaders with iron chains. And to execute the judgment written against them. Vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. It is not ours. It is not ours. He didn't call you and me to judge men. He called us to pray for them. He called us to call upon his name. He called us to declare his word. And the things that he has written will come to pass. Now watch this. This is the glorious privilege. Look at your neighbor and say, this is a privilege. Not with a question mark, with a statement. This is the glorious privilege of his faithful ones. Praise the Lord. This is your privilege and your privilege and your privilege and your privilege and our privilege. This is the pattern that God sets for his people going to battle. Anybody in a personal struggle right now? Just lift up your hand if you are. You're, going, you're, you're battling things. Yeah, sis. Yeah, absolutely. Huh? Anybody? Else? Yeah. You bet, Grace. Yeah. We're going to pray for Isabella here in a little bit. Absolutely. You bet. This is how God wants you to go to the battle. It's rare that a day goes by 
that I don't start my morning off with praise and worship. It's rare. You know why? Because there's battles to be fought that today. And he says, you want victory? Begin to spend time with me. Pastor, you don't know my schedule, honey. <laughs> you don't know mine. When I set my schedule for the day and I get things in it, it sometimes requires me to get up at 3 o'clock in the morning, not 5. But there's one thing I know. I will not sacrifice my time with God to be successful in this world. You know what I know? If I don't spend time with God, and it's not me who made this up, it's men much stronger than I. Smith Wigglesworth and Wesley and all those men, and mighty men of God even today, when God sets their schedule, they back it down and say, okay, Lord, I need to go to bed a lot earlier tonight because I'm getting up early. But it's going to start with you. See, October 31st and November 1 and 2 coming up when the power force, the next generation, isn't that cool? The next generation. That's the event. That's not the process. God has processes. He has patterns. And he is a God who brings order into chaos. Breaching the walls is a miracle thing of God. But he's told me to tell us, we're going to penetrate the walls. We're going to change the atmosphere. We're going to do things that the world never has seen before. I mentioned to Superintendent Josie the other day that we're going to help some of our teachers as, as best we can. We're going to have folks who will volunteer, maybe two hours, four hours, whatever they can. I'm going to do it. He said, nobody's ever done that for us. Josh and Derek, they're purchasing a big fish fryer. Yeah. Not for the men. Oh, we use it. Because I love fish. But that's not the why. We're going to serve our teachers when they're having teacher work day and there's no students around. When they are there for half the day, we're going to be there to minister to them a meal. And Superintendent Josie said, nobody's ever done that for us. I said, we are. We're not against you. We are for you. <laughs> Is there any place in Scripture that anybody can think that we have this pattern that I just read. Any place? Yeah, pe that's right. People on Wednesday night can't answer because you got the cheat sheet. Cheat, 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 cheat. Don't say that too fast. Yes! You know, when I was young, I didn't think it ever happened again. But God gives us a pattern in Psalms 149. In Joshua, you read it in chapter 6, the fall of Jericho, what did he say? He said, to, he said to Joshua, he says, Now the gates of Jericho were tightly shut because the people were afraid of the Israelites. We have a world of darkness who's afraid of Christians. They would much rather kill you than to embrace you. But I want you to know something. God has positioned in our schools in a day of such like today where there is a door being opened. Those principals had to say, come on in. Not just the superintendent. Beloved, I want you to know something. If I had my druthers, I'd have every one of you call a principal, call the teachers and say, I want to thank you for doing what you're doing. It is a mighty step of restoring order. You don't have to be religious about it. Just be thankful. God's going to do the miracle. 
you and I didn't save anybody. It's his blood and his scars. Listen to what it says. No one was allowed to go out or in, but the Lord said to Joshua, I have given you Jericho. It's kings, did you hear that? And all its strong warriors. I, I hope you're catching this. You and your fighting men should march around the town once a day for six days. I mean, remember that story. Who led the way? The priest. That's right. The singers. Yeah, yeah. What were they doing? They were praying and they were singing, celebrating the living God. They were worshiping. They were praising his name. And we come up and day seven, they do what? They marched around how many times? Seven times. On the seventh time, what did they do? Shouted! Shabbat! And what happened? The walls came down. This is the God who is the same yesterday, today, and forever. This is the God you serve and I serve. Pastor, what are you saying to us? Anybody got mountains in your life? Anybody got struggles? Anybody in battles? Yes, we are. But pastor, what can I do? God has ordered the steps of righteous men and women who will do it his way. He will meet you where you're at. Well, so pastor, what are we supposed to do? Pray. Pray. More than that, I want us to fill every day of our upcoming months with praise and worship in our day. John Jacobs was in our, my home. He's been staying with me. I said, Bob, I haven't felt this peace and this comfort in a long time. He had three football players staying with him over in ECU, his son being one of them. He's, and those guys, you know, football players, they're, they're silly. And uh, they're not the ones who are going to spend a lot of time in the Word of God. How do I know? I was there. Sports was my God. Wrongfully, but it was true. I'm being honest. Watch what I'm going to say. He said, Bob, I need to take those CDs that you've got in praise and worship and put them in my car. Here it was. I need to change my atmosphere. You know what I'm talking about. So here's what I'm going to ask you to do before we even start praying, going to the battle. I want you to change the atmosphere of your home. Change it. Oh, Pastor. <laughs> I do. I understand. You may have to go to bed earlier. Turn the tube off a little earlier. Maybe even take some melatonin. I don't know. I'm, I'm teasing. If it takes me 10 seconds to go to sleep, I've got insomnia. Will you change the atmosphere of your home? You know why I know this is so important? Listen to me. This is so important. My goodness. If we're going to change the atmosphere there, it's got to start here. How many have something on the TV or songs or something on all the time when you're working around the house or you're working? And you begin to make it that praise music. Begin to make it music that edifies our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. He's going to give us a victory. He's already given it to us. That's what his word says. But his pattern is sure and true. 
Will you do that with me? Will you join me? Honey, this is not a sermon. This is a, this is a word. We can get all kinds of sermons, but when God gives you a word, I'll, pre- I'll finish my sermon next week, but this is a word that God is saying to us. I want you to see the victory in the Spirit, but I want you to walk in the, the presence of God every day. Father, seal this in us today that our days will start with the music of heaven, with anointed words, Lord, that others bring that speak of the awesomeness of you and the holiness of you and the beauty of your holiness. Lord, whether it's a quick beat or whether it's a, an amazing grace or the old rugged cross, let it bathe our spirit as we worship you. Lord, we may not take an hour every day to do it. Some of us could. Lord, it may be 10, 15 minutes of breaking open your word and just not how much I can read, but that what I read is like a healthy breakfast. So today, Lord, do that. And Lord, we're going to begin to pray for divine visitations of God even before the teens come here. Lord, we're going to encourage our principals and our teachers and we're going to encourage our students. We're going to stand together. Lord, the enemy will try to break up any harmony. The enemy will come and try to distract and try to dissuade and discourage and make us feel like, God, it's hopeless. But God, you have already shown us that we already have a victory. So today, Lord, whether we're close to you or whether we're far from you, may we commit to letting the atmosphere in our homes change and begin to realize how awesome it is when God's people are humbled in the presence of God. Today, Lord, do that. And we give you praise in the name of Jesus. God's people said, Amen. Amen. Oh, we got time. Always have time. We got somebody to squeal on. He's back. I love you, Herb. Welcome home, handsome. Welcome home. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, what's deposited, yeah. So you can tell me what your issue is. Because now the music won't impede you from doing what you need to do. Amen. And young people, like I said, they are the ones who can impede you. Social media, television, music, entertainment. Amen. Honey, thank you. Amen. Amen. Folks, this is God. Holy smokes. What's that, sweetheart? 
<laughs> yeah, honey, that's perfect. Take the P out of preach and make it a reach. Amen. Reach. Reach out. Reach down. Reach up. That, that, that would preach. No, that would not. Wow. Isn't God cool? He is cool. Yes, ma'am. This is family, folks. This is not abnormal. <laughs> oh, yeah. Teachers just as well as the ones in the schools. And we're teaching 40 hours a week, maybe. But we're teachers, too. And we sure do need the help. Yes, ma'am. And the covering of the prayers of God's people to help us there <laughs> against all the political correctness mischief that wants to muzzle our mouths. Amen, Sharon. She is the Rose of Sharon. Her real name is Sharon, so I'm having fun with that word. Glory to God. This is a cool day, church. This is a day that ought to go down in our archives of what God's going to do and doing. A day of miraculous activity of God. I love God when he heals people from sicknesses, but I love watching him break open the gates of hell. Love it. Glory to God. I want to pray for Isabel. Little Isabel Hutton had a, was born with her intestines were outside. They have put it back in, put them back in. And we're going to pray that there is no infection, there's no sickness out of it, that th she's strong. Mama went home a couple days ago, and uh, but our little one is, she's coming through, but we want to cover Isabel. Okay. They will stay in without, without infection, without, yeah, and minimal pain, zero pain. I like no pain. Everybody said amen. Yeah, yeah. Okay, let's pray. Father, today be with the little Isabel. Lord, let your hand be upon that beautiful little baby. Lord, strengthen her body. Body, spirit, soul, little mind, as fragile as it is, and bring healing. Perfect healing in the name of Jesus. Lord, as a body of believers, we will call Isabel out over the days ahead until we hear the answer. And we trust you. In the name of Jesus, amen. Amen. Amy Mott, where are you? Amy Mott. She did what? Oh, my goodness. Whose is that? <laughs> Hi, AJ. Hi, darling. Right on the nose. You got blue eyes. This lady is headed down to Costa Rica. And we are going to have a celebration. And I thought last week you were leaving this last week, and I thought, uh, I thought, oh, oh, I missed it. I didn't pray for my girl. And I'm so excited. We are thrilled for you. We are thrilled. Yeah. She's going down with a number of ladies from her whole district. And so you can't go. <laughs> She'll take you, but you can't go. So we're going to pray over her. Would you stretch forth your hand? Father, I thank you. Thank you for Amy and her leadership and her love for people and her love for, for you. So today, Lord, we know she's going to be going south, headed to Costa Rica to do a wonderful work for the Lord Jesus Christ and the kingdom. Lord, for every lady gone, and especially this one, let the angels of mercy be with her. Let the traveling mercies of God be with her. Lord, would your, let your wisdom and your counsel guide and direct her steps. And God, give her a divine anointing for the ministry that she's been called to. 
and be with all of the ladies, Lord. Let great reports come back where God has done great and mighty things. And Lord, we give you praise for it in your precious and awesome name. Amen. Amen. Do you have any needs going down that way? you do, let us know. Okay. We love you. Thank you. Glory to God. We always bring babies out like this. Josh, where are you at? You got it. Okay. You, you want me to pray for you too? Okay. I will. I do. Church, I hope the Spirit of the Lord is impressing you. Every one of us. I believe we are changing the atmosphere of this whole county and beyond. I believe it so rich, so real, he's showing it to us even before it starts to happen. Glory to God. I'll hush. Amen. Amen. Isn't God good? <laughs> when he comes down and changes service and it's all about him. And that's what church should be about. Amen. So this morning before we dismiss, got a few more things just really quickly. If you're a guest in here, thank you for coming this morning uh, to be a part of our family here at AFA. <clears throat> and if you're a guest in here, you'll see in front of you a little card like this as our ushers come and hand out our care booklets. If you would, just fill that out. And as we take offering, you can drop it in there or you can take it to the back information desk. And we'd like to just give you a gift to say thank you for coming this morning. Uh, we've got a big uh, date coming up. Uh, coming up really soon, and it's going to be in September. Uh, and it's going to be our AFA Family and Friends Picnic Fish Fry. How many of you like to eat fish? Anybody in here? A big fish fry? <coughs> We're going to have fish and hush puppies and slaw and all kinds of things. And uh, we've got a lot of things that are going to happen there. We have a horseshoe tournament that we had last year, me and Brother Randy Morton. Really, it was all Randy. But we ended up winning that horseshoe tournament. So somebody can take the title back from us. I have the golden throne in my office uh, right now. Uh, we're going to have a pie contest. So how many of you ladies can bake some homemade pie? Anybody in? <laughs> I'm a, I'd like to be a taste tester on that. But we're going to have a pie contest. And we want you to make your best homemade pie. We're going to put those out there and see who can do that. We're going to have cornhole. We're going to have flag football, kids games. And we want to encourage you to bring a friend out to this event on September. Uh, we want to make this an AFA family and friends picnic. Everybody say, and friends. So if you know somebody around you that doesn't have a church home, or, or even if they do, they just want to come and be loved on by us, we want to do that for you. So we got a quick uh, promo video that we'd like to show you this morning. Hey, Kathy, I just seen Brett, our intern, come through here a few minutes ago. I need to talk to him. Have you seen him? What are you doing? Man, what's it look like I'm doing? Don't you remember last year? The horseshoe tournament? Do you mean our AFA family picnic? The one that we're going to have this year on September 10th at City Lake Park at 2 o'clock? Oh, this year, that trophy's mine. Pastor Stacy, I've been practicing all year. You've got to watch me throw. Watch me throw. Mm. 
One more time, Pastor Tracy. One more time. I got this. I promise you. I got this. Look, Pastor Stacy, that was just a mistake. But do you want to be on my team? Hey, Brett. What are you doing, man? It's the trophy. Dude, what are you doing? The trophy. I want that trophy. <laughs> do you want this trophy? Yeah. Watch me throw. Wait a minute, wait a minute. You mean throw like this? Keep practicing, buddy. No! I did that, Pastor. I just chunked it. <laughs> well, hey, don't forget about that picnic coming up uh, September the 10th at 2 p.m. at City Lake Park, and we'd love to see you out there. Uh, so as the ushers come this morning, we're going to receive our morning offering, and we have a special uh, group this morning that you've seen this morning who was getting their baby dedicated, <laughs> and they're going to have sing a special for us. Father, we come to you, and I thank you so much, God, for everything that you do. God, all that you've done this morning, God, the promises, and Father, just that we're anticipating what's coming, Lord. And Father, I pray this morning as we give to you, God, that you would help use that, Father, to touch your kingdom, and we give all the glory and honor to you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I'll pray for Eric. Bless his heart. He tends to shake. I was on my way to California. Leaving New York City far behind My life was like a bundle of confusion I was looking for a love that I could never find So I turned into a gospel station And I heard about a sweet salvation And then I gave it all to him My heart, my soul, and my mind and now I can't stop talking about him, can't stop talking about the changes taking place in me. You know that I can't be living without him, because things are getting clear and I can finally see. My life is like a celebration, because I am a new creation. And now I can't stop talking about him. Every day So I was driving down the highway Singing hallelujah and feeling fine When this long man pulled me over He said to me, you're gonna walk the dotted line Said I got a strange suspicion just wondering about your condition. And I said, I've had a taste of what it means to be alive. Yeah. Woo! And now I can't stop talking about him. Can't stop talking about the changes taking place in me. You know that I can't be living without him. Because things are getting clear and I can finally see. My life is like a celebration Because I am a new creation And now I can't stop talking about him Every day So if you're wondering why why I'm so happy 
and free Well, I'm here to testify Just look what he's doing in me And now I can't stop talking about him Can't stop talking about the changes taking place in me You know that I can't be living without him Things are getting clear and I can finally see My life is like a celebration Because I am a new creation And now I can't stop talking about him No, I can't be living without him No, I can't stop talking about him No, no, every day Can't stop talking about him That is beautiful. Oh, we do have a harp. The piano is actually a harp, technically. So oh. that means, there you go. Sorry. Where's the tambourine? Uh, we'll work on that. Would you stand with us? Yes. <laughs> Thank you for being here. Just touch your neighbor real quick. Just touch him. Just lay your hand on him. Let's, let's just uh, say a prayer as we part together. Lord, thank you so much for this morning. And every need you know about. And Lord, you know where every person is in their life. And, and as we leave here today, I pray that you just open up doors of opportunity to reach out to our community, to share the love of Jesus Christ. Because we know that you have shared so much of your love on us and that you've empowered us to take your love to this world. So open up doors, God. Encourage us and speak to us through your Holy Spirit and reveal your plan for us in our lives. Lord, I pray a special blessing over each person as we leave this morning that you will keep us in your will and keep us before you, Lord, just to seek your face. We thank you. We love you, Jesus. We bless your holy name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.